What's the buzz on this week's Flying Marmot? The Year of Bread continues, potables pursued, and some miniature moments. Flying Marmot here. Can't fly and I'm not a marmot, but I can go on a road trip to Black Diamond. Can't go to Black Diamond without coming here. This is definitely a five-star spot. So many sodas. Speaking of things you have to visit in this neck of the woods, there's another five-star spot. We have some very sleepy bees. Midwinter sleepy bees. So sleepy, so honeybee. I, I give these guys like four stars just for still being up and about. So we're gonna try some bitter lemon. Ooh. And straight it is, well, quite bitter, but I think it'll make some excellent mix. Shame I'm out of gin. Uh, still, I'd give it like uh, three and a half, four stars if you really like your taste of zest, because that's what it is. It's a very zesty lemon with some quinine in it. And a noisy baby. I may have found the best knockoff soda ever with a flying cauldron butterscotch beer. But the flavor text is even better. Heh, <laughs> flavor text. Flying Cauldron Butterscotch Beer. Since 1374, the Flying Cauldron has been making this magical brew for underaged wizards or wizards who are young at heart at their brew pub in Hogsbreath, England. The recipe has changed little over the centuries. It has the perfect combination of spells and quality natural ingredients. Add a scoop of vanilla ice cream to create our giggle potion. I, I'm honestly in awe that they did not in fact mention it being the favorite of some wizard named Perry Hotter or some such thing. That, that is some classic labeling. Let's see if it tastes uh, as interesting as it sounds. Cheers. Oh wow. Yeah, okay, that is, I'm gonna give you two stars. I mean, I can't just give you one, because I kind of knew what I was getting into, but, but two stars is the best I can give this thing. And our third and final, this one's another one that apparently is primarily made for mixing with alcohol, but I'm going to try it straight, because I like a good ginger beer. Well, we have oh, that's nice. Hmm? We have if you wanted. Well, this one calls for vodka, but it's kind of early in the day for it. Ms. Marmot is trying to talk me into drinking. Right in the middle of the day. Mm. They don't know what time it is. It's true, it could be any time. You just have to take my word for it. Uh, I'm gonna give this one, yeah, that's like a four star ginger beer. Nice, got good crisp bite. I, I guess I'm really picky about my pops is what I'm finding out. Even though I'll drink ones that I think are three stars and still be very happy with them. I don't know. Uh, and Ms. Marmot gets a birthday hug. Birthday hug. The mini Marmot is developing a sense of humor. The problem is that she only likes one punchline. Hey, mini Marmot, why did the chicken cross the road? <coughs> yeah. Uh huh. Hey, mini Marmot, what's brown and sticky? <coughs> Yeah. So, you know, I got humor covered for at least a couple of years with this one. Five stars. Here we have some gorgeous, pull apart, no need mozzarella buns. Mmm, mmm, looking good. Well, it's tasty, but two things to remember for the next time I do this. Number one, a cheese as bland as mozzarella, you need to leave it in chunks, not actually all out shred it, because then at least you've got bigger pieces of cheese and so you taste them. And number two, probably go better with some herbs. All in all, I'll give it four stars. Next week on The Flying Marmot, more fuzziness, more bread, and a box of mystery.